Hi there, autonomous robot fans. Zoz Brooks here, welcoming you to another of Robo Nation's 2013 competitions, the Student Unmanned Air Systems Competition, or SUAS for short. Unmanned air systems are flying robots, sometimes also called UAVs or drones, so they need a lot of space to do their thing, which is why we're here at the Naval Air Station at Webster Field, Maryland. On the first day, the teams get set up and try to pass their flight readiness review, which certifies their robots as safe to fly. They have to do a journal, and then they have to do their oral presentation. It's not a regurgitation of their written paper. It's more of a flight readiness review. How do they know that they're ready to actually come out and fly? Then, the airspace opens for two days of competition runs. Each team will only get a 30-minute flight time window. With so many teams this year, that's all there's time for. So it's critically important that they be ready to fly as much of the course as possible as soon as they get out there. The goal here is for the students to navigate the waypoints into the search area, look for the targets, and then come out of the search area. Now we also throw in a few things like changing waypoints, and we also have emergent targets that happen to hop up from time to time. But we also have prize barrels so that every team that goes out and finds the bonus target can get prize money. Every team that spells what the targets spell, which is always a secret, uh, can get prize money for that too. So it gives the students some challenge to make sure that they can handle these type of situations, which are pretty much real world situations. Five countries are represented from all over the globe. The US, Canada, India, Spain and Turkey. It's impossible to overstate what a massive commitment it is to travel all that way to a competition like this. Teams brave problems shipping the robots, getting them through customs, sometimes even dealing with visas and passports for their team members, all while trying to focus on actually getting their robots to work. Getting it for, from India to US, first of all, it cost a lot. <laughs> we actually got delayed in custom procedure and we just got the plane 20 minutes before the oral presentation. We had to assemble it and wire it up in 20 minutes, then give the oral presentation. But we did it and it went well. <laughs> the competition is also heating up on the younger side. This year we have twice as many high school teams showing they can mix it up with the college students. The students are so hungry for some type of a challenge that really tests them and helps them to move to another level. And unfortunately, uh, in a lot of the uh, public schools and even private schools, you don't have teachers that are capable of keeping up with the growth of the students. And so I think this kind of an activity, especially a hands-on activity, is exactly what's needed to fill that gap where students want to really propel themselves in another direction. And it, it's great that we can do that and it's super that we got more high school teams that are unafraid of stepping into this arena with some top flight colleges. We have no sponsor. Our school just funded us with $2,000 for a uh, competition of our choice, build the vehicle of our choice. So we've had to manage our own budget. Uh, we didn't have any supervisors or mentors. So it's mostly just us learning from the internet and just uh, experimenting, finding out what works, what doesn't work. What motivated us was the challenge of doing it and the satisfaction that once we accomplish it, we get to see like where we started and then now we're here at a college level of competition. There's been a number of people that I've known that have come through this competition that now work for uh, NAVAIR uh, and various other uh, groups doing UAV work. So I really do think this is a great opportunity for the UAV industry to really foster those engineering talents and really get those young students that are really interested in it into the industry. It teaches you a lot of the hands-on stuff that you're never going to learn if you just go through your classes. So it's definitely beneficial, especially if you're looking for a job. I mean, you meet a lot of people here that you can kind of network with, but also you can talk more technical things when you're going into interviews, so it's definitely a good thing. As long as I've been a student in engineering, I've always wanted to do something cool, something that you know was pushing the envelope of technology. And when we came across this competition, we said, you know, it's so hard. We read through the rules and we saw all the things you had to do with image acquisition and processing. And I said, it would be so much work in a year and a half, but we're gonna do it anyway. So let's just down the torpedo, let's do it. That's what makes a competition like this great. It's real world engineering meets the technological cutting edge and it's all led by the students themselves. You can't get an education like this in the classroom alone. You can follow along with me at robonation.org as well as find the information you need to get your school involved. <laughs>